Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. How are we to live God's way today? Let's reduce it to three simple words. Remember, this is number five, and should we take the Bible literally? So let's reduce it to three words. Are you ready? God says, obey my voice. Is that simple enough? Let's look at it, and let's see That is exactly what Jesus said as well. Now let's come to Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. Now the book of Deuteronomy has a lot of New Testament doctrine in it as well. Now if you want to do a very interesting topical study, find out how many times it says in the Bible, the commandments of God are my commandments. How many times it talks about God's law and God saying, my law, Old Testament and New Testament. And then ask yourself the question, why do those Protestants say the law is done away? Now, how did we get the whole Bible? First of all, God spoke to the patriarchs. Next, he spoke to Moses. Then God spoke the Ten Commandments to all Israel. And he spoke just the Ten Commandments. And some people are theological pinheads that when it says that after God spoke the Ten Commandments, he added no more that that's all we are to follow is the Ten Commandments. And everyone who says that says, we don't have to. It really meant God did not speak any more. All the rest that he gave to the children of Israel, he gave to Moses. That's why when you read here, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying. And that was the greatest number of people to ever hear the voice of God from the top of Mount Sinai speaking to the children of Israel. Minimum, a million six hundred thousand. And what happened when they heard the voice of God? They went to Moses and said, Oh, Moses, we can't stand to hear the voice of God lest we die. You go speak to God, and we'll listen to you. But they never did. Every word we have in the Bible, God has spoken. Or had it written down, in the case of histories coming directly from God. Now let's come to Deuteronomy 11, and we'll just do a little preview toward the next series, The Love of God. A lot of people don't believe that there was the love of God in the Old Testament, but let's read it here, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments. Now we will see in the love series that we're doing, 
And by the way, if you want a full in-depth love series, The Love of God, you go to cbcg.org and you email us that you want the love series and we will send it to you 21 sermons on the love of God, Old Testament and New Testament. And you will see it is impossible to love God without obeying his voice and keeping his commandments. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. Now let's think about this for a minute. Every day we are confronted with choices. Every day we are confronted with good, with evil, with blessing, with cursing. And what we choose to do depends on which one falls into our life. Let's read on. Verse 27, a blessing if. Now, if you have a Bible, you might want to circle that. If. Because, you see, the conditions are not on God. The conditions are upon us as human beings. No person, man or woman, goes to God to tell God what to do. Because that would make the individual God instead of God. And that'll never happen. All right? A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. Now, I want you to think about that for just a minute. What is the in thing today? All religions are going to the same place. Now, in a way, that is true because they are not of God. So they're all going to the same place. Death and destruction. Let's come over here to Deuteronomy 13. Now it talks about false prophets, and you need to understand the world is full of them. How can you tell the difference? Very simple. Do they teach what the Bible teaches completely? And if so, they're teaching what God has spoken. And in the Bible, God has made it simple for every human being for all time. He is recorded the instructions that he has spoken through Moses, through the prophets, and in the New Testament through Jesus Christ and the apostles, and had it written down so you and everyone else can know what did God say. Now then, remember it's important. You have to do the reading. You have to do the searching. You have to do the hungering and thirsting after the Word of God. If God has sent you a Bible, regardless of who gave it to you, you have it. And if you don't read it, it is not God's fault. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1. If a prophet arises among you or a dreamer of dreams, and gives you a sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder which he foretold to you come to pass, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known, or let us serve them. Now, that means, well, let's worship the true God this way, according to our thoughts, according to our dictates, according to our tradition, because after all, 
we have intelligent theologians that say, it's perfectly all right. Notice verse 3. You shall not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, we'll get into that in the love of God segments here pretty soon. Does that describe you? These things are going to come along. How do you prove yourself faithful unless you were tested and you pass the test according to God's way of passing it? So he says in verse 4, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and hold fast to him. Do you obey the voice of the Lord your God? Do you really? Let's come here to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. And God gave King Saul some instruction to do against the enemies of God. And he told him to go eliminate all the Amalekites. Don't take anything. So what did they do? They kept the king alive, and they took all the spoil so they could come back and sacrifice it to God. Cattle and lambs, etc., and they went against the instructions of God through the prophet and priest Samuel. But what did Saul say to Samuel when he was caught? Verse 20, let's begin there, because there are a lot of people who think they're obeying God, and they're not. One good example, every year we go through Christmas, don't we? How many Christmas trees are sold and put in houses? Hundreds of millions. Question. Read Jeremiah 10 carefully, and it says you're not to do that. But how many people obey the voice of God to do that? Yet they think in keeping Christmas, with all the lust and greed associated with it, that they are obeying God. Just like Saul said to Samuel when he got caught. Verse 20. And Saul said to Samuel, Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have completely destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took from the spoil of the flocks and herd, and of the best things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. That is not what Samuel said. Now notice his reply to Saul. Good example of a lot of people thinking, well, I'm doing the will of God. Well, I feel so good about this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the other thing. And surely God will recognize that I'm doing good. Let's see God's answer to that attitude. Verse 22, Then Samuel said, Does the Lord have as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion, stop right there, think about this. When you go against what God has said, when you disobey the voice of God. And I suggest you study the whole book of Jeremiah and the whole reason that Jerusalem was destroyed and the Jews sent off into captivity was because they worshiped other gods and they did not obey the voice of God. From the king to the priest to the people, and God destroyed it and wiped it clean and sent them into captivity because 
They did not obey the voice of the Lord their God. What is your life? Do you think you have some repenting to do? Do you think you need to get right back on track with God? Let's read it. Verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, which he spoke. He has also rejected you from being king. Now, I want you to think about that in relationship to eternal life. Do you think that you can come to Jesus and tell him you're going to do it your way? It's like a man that I met recently, and he says, I'm putting the blood of Jesus Christ over my life. And I said to him, you can't do that. Now, that's a popular thing in Protestantism today. I said, you can't do that. Only God can put you under the blood of Jesus Christ upon repentance through the grace of God. You cannot go to God and appropriate anything from God. You must come to God and repent. You must come to God and obey his voice. Now, before we go to the book of Luke, we'll go there. But let's come to Genesis 26, 5. And let's see about Abraham, who was called the father of the faithful for those in the Old Testament and those in the New Testament. And Paul wrote and said that if we are Christ's, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise because Abraham was under the same covenant as the new covenant. So let's read it here. Now, God was speaking to Isaac, and he said, you're going to receive the blessing that I promised Abraham. And verse 5 tells us why. Because Abraham, notice, obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Abraham will be in the first resurrection when Jesus returns. So don't let anyone deceive you with nice-sounding words that this is the old law. Well, really, in a sense, it is an old law because it comes from the eternal God, and it is eternal, but not old in the sense of being done away because in the new covenant, it is raised to a higher spiritual level. Now let's come to Luke, the fourth chapter. And let's see, when Jesus was tempted, by Satan the devil, what he answered the devil when the devil told him to command that this stone become bread. Notice Jesus' answer. Now, let's understand this. Satan the devil wants you to sin against God, to disobey the voice of God, to break his commandments, to say it's done away. And you know what? That identifies everyone who is not serving the true God. Let's read it. Jesus' answer was this. It is written, the word of God, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And in Deuteronomy 8, 3, it says that proceeds out of his mouth, as well as in Matthew 4, 4. New Testament doctrine. Now, let's come to chapter 6. And as we turn there and read this, I want you to think about your life. 
I want you to think about what you are doing. And if you are a professed Christian, I want you to think about how strong is your profession? Is it lip service to God and you treat Christ kind of like a general rabbit foot? That because you're so good, Jesus has to obey you. Luke 6 is parallel to Matthew 5, 6, and 7. So let's read it here. Luke 6 and verse 45. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart, because he's converted, brings forth that which is good. And the wicked man out of the wicked treasure of his heart brings forth that which is wicked. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, whether harshly or whether nicely. You can say that this evil, oh, it's so wonderful and thrilling and fine. Just think how you're going to feel. Take a little bit of this meth or some of this cocaine or how about some of this heroin? Why don't you come over here and let's have a little sex and see how great that feels. See? Notice verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? You're speaking to God of the abundance of the heart. But do not practice what I say. I want you to think about that. Do you know the teachings of Jesus Christ, forward and backwards? Probably not. Well then, don't you think it's about time you learn them? Because your salvation depends upon it. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and practices them, that means habitually is doing them. I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock, and that rock was Christ. And a flood came and a torrent beat against the house but could not shake it because it was founded on the rock. You stand through every trial, every test, every difficulty. You believe and trust God in everything, in every way, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. What if you don't do that? Verse 49. But the one who has heard my words and has not practiced them. Oh, those are lovely words. Yes, we should love one another as Jesus loves us. Isn't that a wonderful saying? Yes, it is. But if you don't love God, and if you don't keep his words, and if you don't practice what Jesus has said, it does you absolutely no good. And has not practiced them is like a man who built a house on the top of the ground without a foundation. And when the torrent beat against it, it fell at once, and the ruin of that house was great. Now that's why the people were astonished at the teachings of Jesus, because he taught with authority. Now, the Word of God is true. The Word of God contains the words unto salvation and eternal life. Will you obey the voice of the Lord? Will you obey the voice of Jesus Christ? Because it's all right here. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, because it's right here, what he taught what he wants us to do. Do you hear that? Jesus says, repent. Apostle Peter says, repent and be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those are the words of God. Will you obey those words? And will you live by every word of God, as Jesus said? Those are simple and easy to understand scriptures. 
Yes, we should take the word of God literally. And when we begin doing that, we'll be able to understand the more difficult things. They're just difficult. They are not impossible to understand. But they will be impossible to understand if you do not obey the voice of God and begin with the simple things that God tells us, beginning with the very first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. So this is what the Bible teaches. Now you need this new booklet. Why Christianity in America has failed, and it has. And you need the book, Lord, What Should I Do? And you also need the Holy Bible in its original order, a faithful version, so you can have the confidence that this translation is based upon the truth of God and translated in the love and fear of God to present the truth of God so that you may understand how you can receive eternal life. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home, and be sure and visit our other website, cbcg.org. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone.